Hey everyone, it's the Dream Star Squad, and welcome to episode five of the Dream Star Squad podcast. It's been months since we've done an episode. Uh, the last episode was a QA, but we're back with another episode. Uh, it's the same this time, it's gonna be uh, us three for this podcast. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we got a we got a bunch of topics to uh talk about uh four of them I pretty much, we pretty much thought about uh so the uh so first topic we're gonna talk about is of course the verbal aid situation can can you enlighten me because I actually have not seen the video yeah me neither. <laughs> Yeah, I pretty much saw. I I think I I think I saw the video. Like I just saw the full video. And <laughs> okay, so for context, uh, for those of you who do not know, if you if for some whatever reason if you don't know, but um, word got out that a YouTuber known as Verbalace, who's at five over five million subscribers, uh, basically there was a animation that was leaked, uh, where he of him. And a character named Hasman Hotel. And the thing about that animation was that um, Verbalist himself actually paid 50k in order to, in order to have that animation created. Fifty thousand dollars just 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 for one animation. Fifty thousand just for a soft call. You know what animation? Oh yeah. What? <laughs> And the thing, so the, a lot of stuff, a lot of information came out about that. So um, apparently that it wasn't really recent. Well, the whole animation wasn't recent. In fact, um, he asked for it and it was and it was made back in May 2021. So that was three years ago. It was around a time where uh, he was uh, 37. He, yeah, I just want to get this out of the way. He was 37 at that time. Now he's 40 years old. Oh Oof. my god, man. Yeah. <laughs> I actually did my research on this, so, yeah. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And all, I can, and all I can say is, over the past few days since that animation came out, my Twitter page has literally exploded. I've been seeing meme after meme after meme. Oh, yeah. On that one scene where he's running away. Yeah, that whole that whole ordeal is trend. That whole ordeal has been trending for like days, over a week. And, it, and it's only that one scene they're doing as well, where, where where I think I think the girl's name is Charlie. Yeah, is chasing him. Yes, that's it. Oh, yep. Yeah, now nah, I've seen. Now, nah, now nah, I know what you're talking about. Wait, yeah, Charlie from Charlie? Hospital Hotel. Yes. Yeah, Charlie from Hospital Hotel. He's a lesbian though. That that's the same yeah, that's the same thing I was thinking. He's definitely lesbian, which I I mean don't get me wrong, she's she's adorable and deserves to be protected. But she's definitely taken. Yep. Yeah. Is... It's madness. If you guys want to check it out, check out my reaction. You can definitely tell she's in a Fully committed relationship. Definitely, oh you can God. check out. You can definitely check out his reaction. Easily one of his most popular videos. For no reason whatsoever. I still don't know how that video got so popular. <laughs> mm. I think. Well, I mean, I think Hasman Hotel really was like. I, I think it was probably like a hot topic going on, and the fact that um, you reacting to it um pretty much bo I, I think that was like a key factor to it considering like how uh, possible i think hasman hotel like being a hot topic at that time so yeah that was probably yeah, yeah that was probably uh, why it blew up five years ago yeah <laughs> crazy bullshit yes that's just so while we're on the topic man. Or on topic of Hasbro Hotel, go check out the cartoon that's on Amazon Prime right now. Product place I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want if you want, you can check out the uh, cartoon. Um, I haven't really, I haven't really watched it myself. I, I, I've like, I've, I haven't, I've only seen like the pilot, and that's pretty much from your uh, reaction. Yay. 
But yeah, it, it just really, my... it just really blows my mind the fact that he would pay fifty k for for like an animation. And the thing that the audit is that he wasn't even he wasn't even planning on uploading it. This was just for himself. Yet that got, it just as so happens to get leaked. We say this, and yet YouTubers have spent way more money for way worse. Oh no, I'm telling exactly. you, Verbal Ace is more <laughs> is more or less than is likely a, a family friendly type of uh, YouTuber who does beatboxes on his channel. Oh yeah. yeah. So, so it turns out this dude has a dark side. Then fair enough. Well, not really a dark Both side. He he's not really a dark <laughs> side. <laughs> Not really a dog side. It's just like dumb investment. Like, why the fuck would you pay that kind of money for just one animation? Yeah, like <laughs> you could do a lot he, more fifty k than you think. Well, and I, we we know he has a type now. And the most annoying thing, well, annoying thing is he hasn't made a response to, to all this yet. Still I hasn't. He did, did, did he? Black I'm not sure. I think he did. Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm actually looking on Twitter right now. There's also one. There's also one thing that like is, is also laughable. Um, a month oh, ago, yeah. a, a month ago, he made a video called "Help Save Coaching Beatbox Battles." <laughs> well, basically, his um, his beatbox chat, his beatbox uh battles. They weren't really doing really well, and that's why he was asking for nine creators, nine animators and content creators to create like at least a 10 second, uh, at least a 10 second clip for a, a Luigi beatbox, uh, animation. And the, the reason, I think the, that's one thing, so he tried to do this in order to like gather, in order to bring together content creators and, um, animators and try to boost their YouTube channels. Which is all fine and dandy, but one thing that really, really rubbed me the wrong way was the fact that he ch he tried to make it so that it, he literally compared one his latest um beatbox battle, which was only at one million subscribe, or I mean one million views, to the amount of subscribers he had. So he literally trying to say that his the views on that uh beatbox did not match the amount of subscribers he have. Oh, and speaking of which, I just looked, I just looked up on Twitter and he, and he has dropped dropped a video on um, on on on, a, on his Instagram. Really? So it was on his Instagram, not his YouTube. I believe so. okay. Oh, I'm going to we're going to have to check that out. I'm actually on his channel right now. I see no video about it. Yeah. And I think this is not on Insta. But yeah, I find it really, I uh, find it really last. La I find it really laughable the fact that he would th he would think that his latest beatbox battle, which was at one, which was at one million like views, is pretty much his lowest one. Considering, and, and like I understand, it, it's not gonna match the amount of subscribers, but like it's still good enough. And, and yeah, if you can compare that to like his like most popular uh, beatbox battles, it gone on like a shit ton of views. And his pop most popular one is at over a hundred million. Wow. So yeah, he, he hundred million good views. So yeah, he he, he has some good views on uh, like a lot of his beatbox battles. I I just still find it. I I just can't believe he would actually like do all of this just because his latest like beatbox battle was at a million at a million views. Now and now I think he may have um accidentally ended it ended it. <laughs> Stop his career, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, oh, no. I mean to be fair, not I'm not the only one who that like that. Sp like spoke about this. I know a million. Yeah. It's not as bad as most people think. It's not as bad as most people think. It is at least not anything. It is at least the characters over the age of 20, at least. True. Most of you know who, who we're talking about. <laughs> And it's not like he's like just some so so that started like like five or six years ago. No, he's been on the platform for almost eighteen years. Crazy. Very crazy. But yeah, like, <laughs> like gone. 
but yeah, like that that whole situation, I don't, <laughs> I don't really see this as like a much of a big deal or like something like to cancel him over. Like it, it's just a stupid like, it's just like bad. <laughs> it it just like, uh, I can't I can't even really describe it. But like it's just bad. Yeah, that's the word. It's bad investment on that kind of money. Like think of the yeah. think of anything. Think of just like anything you could do with fifty k. I just thought. I don't something you could do with 50k. Not, not purge on, not purge on a bad animation with with with, with a character being left with, with a fictional character. <laughs> Meanwhile, <sighs> animated YouTubers. <laughs> I mean, that's. <laughs> I mean, at least, um, at least they're not like, at least they're not like making it into like a whole goddamn love, ch l l l love type of thing. That bit three from. And the second thing about this as well, I believe the, uh, I believe the, the 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 creator of Hasbro Hotel actually also said something about it as well, and she was actually embarrassed by it. So, no shit, yes, like the character if, is a, <laughs> characters in a relationship. Gotta do what anybody do with Angel does. He doesn't care. <laughs> hmm. Is it, I, I mean, mean the entire thing, the entire thing would, would. I'll be embarrassed by it too. Yeah, it's no, it's no different from like the. Uh, it's no different from that situation, like with the character Starfo and like his um English VA Faye Mata was like saw what was going on with the actual character and thought like it, it, he was trending because people were actually enjoying the dub but like she come to find come to find out she, he was trending for something else and i know she was a bit embarrassed by that <laughs> but yeah <laughs> yeah crazy crazy situation but for both sides. Rebel Ace is not bad in any in any right of the word. It's just a very terrible investment, people. Yeah. He's definitely not a bad person. Trust me. Is I, there it? are way worse YouTubers than him. Oh, absolutely. Our show speed. <laughs> which which by the way which by the way, um he 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 he, he named his dog the word I cannot say. Yeah, I saw it too. <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why name it that of all things? I mean, I know, I know he's. You can tell, you can I know he's black, after, but so still. What? Why, why name a dog that of all things? You can tell me after the video ends. <laughs> it's it's the M word, Phoenix. That's what, that's what his name is. Yeah. Also, oh, he's an idiot. Good to know. <laughs> Another reason not to watch his channel. I mean, he's been an idiot. Yeah, he he has. The fact is, the fact, Dude, the fact I saw an entire video set around how his his mom ends up ruining his videos. <laughs> there was also, Dude, can you blame there was also one clip where his younger brother actually got his uh, account, his PlayStation account, banned for three days. Oh <laughs> shit! For what? <laughs> I don't know. It was basically for playing Little Big Planet, and I don't know, like the. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh wait, wait. Actually, I don't think that was intentional because I know it wasn't. It is... I know it wasn't. I did saw the clip. No, listen, I, I actually have. A, I actually, I actually have a deeper meaning of this because, um, I don't know when they did this, but the servers for for, for for those games were shut down recently because of a because of a massive exploit that was found with found with the reporting system on that game. So they've had to, had to shut the servers down because that because that was actually getting people banned off PlayStation Network. Well, if that is the case, then uh, I say I show speed really owes his younger brother an apology. Yeah, because it, it, if it was by that one person who was just literally getting people banned by just exploiting their own system, then it def I don't think speed was actually responsible. I don't think he was actually responsible for it. But, but, I, but I don't know, don't know the full context. So, yeah. All right. Now onto the uh, now onto another topic. Uh, and I know we've all played. I know we all played Fortnite together. And like, I know both of you don't play it that much. But like, um, uh, what are you? What I know, I know. But like, what are your actually th actual thoughts on uh collab skins being part of a battle pass? What are your thoughts on that? Honestly, I don't know because I don't play Fortnite enough. Phoenix, what do you think? 
Uh, I would want more suits. Anything's better than Peter Griffin. Well, I, um... I say, I say this because there's, like, for, like, almost a month, the whole... There's been, like, a whole discourse about the, uh... Collab skins being in battle passes. Some and there were some people um saying that um collab skins should never be in a battle pass again. They should just be like purchase bow in the shop. Some were saying like they just want the older collab skins to uh, be back in just to, to be brought back and for people to actual purchase. And um there's actually like a few people who saying that the, um the collab skins in the battle passes should never return. I mean, I know many skins that people do want, such as if if Fortnite had a full offline mode, which I know it won't because it's online only. If it did, I would actually start buying skins. And if there's one skin skin I actually want, it's the flipping future armor skins. Yeah, because I'm actually a, I'm actually a fan of that show. Well, if future if future armor if future armor actually does come back in the shop, then I'll let you know on that. No, it's all right. I'm not going to get it because, of course, um, I probably won't have any, any cash by then. But you know, you know what it's like. I mean, I can. I mean, I can gift one of the skins to you. But really, man, it's all right. Don't, don't waste your money on me. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. Like, it's not much of a big deal. You know, you want to. You know, you're my bro. And you know, you know that I'm. You know, I have your bag, and so. Obviously, I'm gonna have to at okay. least. Uh, obviously, I'm gonna at least try to like, uh, like, get you at least a one or two more skins. Thanks, dude. <laughs> but thanks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. but yeah, um, but yeah, this whole, like the whole like idea, the whole idea of bringing back um collab skins from the, the previous battle passes is that is actually a good idea considering that um. I know just like for I know I said this before, but Fortnite is at an all-time high, and there's like a lot of newcomers into the game, and I can just Im just imagine the amount of frustration they could feel when they realize that some of their favorite skins from Marvel and DC are unable to purchase because they were stuck behind a battle pass. I mean, in season and like in chapter two, season two, um, I mean, in chapter two, season four, there was literally an entire battle. There was like a whole season. Well, it's nothing but Marvel skins in the Battle Pass. Have any of those come back yet, or is it just, um... Oh, no, they're 100% locked behind the Battle Pass, meaning you can never get them. Yeah, I can definitely see what you mean, because... That, this is one thing I hate about modern gaming, alright? Fear of missing out, um, c c content, because... If you think about it, the stuff like that, you, you only have, like, what? A few months to get it? But, but what if you can't? Then what? You, you, you can't get the skin, and I mean, th and then it may never return. That's one thing I don't like about Fortnite. Yeah, and the fact that they were locked behind the majority of like the most popular characters behind the battle pass is just it's it's extremely criminal. No, it's in fact, in fact, it, even fucking Forza does it, but Forza, but Forza, Forza is nowhere near as bad because they actually do return every now and again. But you get the general idea. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It really is. I mean, we can. I I know we can purchase Captain America and like Hulk in the item shop. I know we can purchase Hawkeye in the item shop. But skins like Iron Man, Wolverine, Storm, Mystique, even the original Spider Man cannot cannot be purchasable. I mean, that's just ridiculous, don't you think? I mean. I I mean, at least make them part of the item shop after like what a few months or so, months or so. Yeah. I think if that happens, um, there'll be a lot more players with them. That's for sure. And I mean, a lot more players. Like, isn't? I I said this before in my latest video. It wouldn't hurt if they would just make a battle pass without any collab skins, because like I did give an example of one collab. That was popular. Did not end up being was not in a battle pass or an event pass. It was just completely purchasable for players. And also, that was also in the uh, event pass. Except those cosmetics in the event pass will later become uh, its own bundle. And uh, the collab I'm talking about is of course Dragon Ball. 
like there's like over nine there was like over nine dragon ball skins but the first four that came out which was goku vegeta boma and beerus when they came out like it was trending everywhere it was trending everywhere on twitter like literally a lot of people were talking about it and a lot of content creators who are like dragon ball fans end up making good videos about it and those actually came back didn't they oh yeah they came yeah they came back like weeks ago hmm it, it just it just shows that 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 with that with enough, enough content creators talking about it it's guaranteed to come back yeah so i don't and i so i don't really see the issue of making a battle pass without without uh adding any collab skins into the battle pass they've done it before the last season which was fortnite og It's crazy. Is yeah, is is very crazy. Uh but yeah, on to the next topic and uh uh let's so let's get on to Hidogaru Sky. So uh Here we go, here we go. So I did state it like a year ago that I would like I, I would just stop watching Hidogaru Sky until for like the majority of twenty twenty three and I will probably come back to it. In early 2024 before the new season airs and for it and surprise surprise i was able to do that so so just getting just getting this out of the way first star what do you think of it i think it's a really i think it's a really great season is i i wouldn't i wouldn't put it in my top five but it's definitely in the top it's definitely in the top tens and I really do enjoy it every how every single character developed really well. Uh especially Ageha, in my opinion. Asia is an eighteen is a kid in an eighteen year old's body. <laughs> Stay otherwise. <laughs> She's pretty much like Phoenix, yeah. <laughs> hey, you hear that, Phoenix? <laughs> I think he might be you dead. Know what? Oh, there you go. Say that again, start. I say I get is pretty much like you, Phoenix. You know, it's not wrong. You're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. Yeah. I mean, for someone just, who's PC just, Asia. Gone. It feels more like a season that I would write. And you know this is true. Yeah. And Dare I say it? It's actually my. Fa it's actually. It's actually a great season to go out on. On, in my opinion, for the second generation, because starting with with, with wonderful British year, I say it's a third generation. So it literally, it literally ended with a bang, pretty much. I still have to watch the trailer for that. For <laughs> I shared it, it in my server. <laughs> it's in the Breaker Discord. I, I know. Yeah. I know. I just completely forgot about it. <laughs> like Gosh. Okay, after this, you're definitely watching it. Okay. Fair enough. Wait. I know one thing. Yeah. On. No, you can go. I know one thing for sure about for 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 sure. It, it, it Hirogaru is a million times better than Hakuto. A million times better. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, I mean, because their baby actually managed to transform. Yes. Ellie has so much better has, has so much better writing and character development. Plus, she's a lot funnier. That's because they didn't just say, "Oh, she's absolutely." From the she, 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 she's not from the future. Future. She, she's she, a star she's, baby. She's actually <laughs> that you need to actually look after. <laughs> she's a star baby. She's Rosalina's baby. I mean, that, oh, oh, I would like to know a bit, bit of backstory. Um, story about all that to be honest but time um, it's too late now already in the final and few episodes i'm not gonna talk about how, how how the star gave birth we don't talk about that yeah <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> that, that, it's, it's too complicated that's from dove into oh let's let's talk about the birds and the bees start star baby edition <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> And I will say they, 
I will say I was a bit I was a bit worried about how they will uh, implement a bit of time travel at the end, but I'm really glad they initiated it really well. You mean yeah, they did it well in Delicious Party too? Absolutely, it was just the same thing. Yeah, but although <laughs> Delicious Party, thing is, I don't remember much about Delicious Party. That that just shows I don't really care much about that show anymore. Ow. Delicious Party's one was definitely a lot better than well, well what 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 Hakuto did. We're both better than Hagato. Let's be real. Yeah. One thing I will say about him, he, he, about that entire sequence in in in, in Hiragaru is um I do wish Asia and Tubasa actually went actually went back with them as well. No, no. So I'm gonna say this right now. There is another so, and you, in the other server that I'm in, they basically had to say, oh. Oh, Sora and Mashiro didn't have too many moments near, near the second half, so they're just like, oh yeah, let's have have the family and their baby go back in time. <laughs> I mean, it does make We're sense if you, if you say it like that. You know what I mean. Yeah. You know well enough what I mean. And speaking of speaking of which, I can pretty much easily say that Mashiro is easily easily the most sweetest pink cure out of uh, no, not pink cure, but easily the sweetest white, white cure. cure. Yeah, white cure. Absolutely, she's a common misconception that a lot of people were making about this season. She's she's literally a ball of kindness. She really is. Yep. Like I said, a season I would write. <laughs> I need, and usually I only have one cure as my favorite, but this year all of them are, are, are all equal for me. But they're also just so lovable in their own way. Yeah. I still think I get, I still think I get is my favorite, but I can't really decide. I, I think all three, the rest of them are easily my second favorite. I can't even decide out of the other uh, three. I can't even decide out of Subasa, Sora, or Mashiro. That's Sorry. not true. You're not putting in your punk pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Of that is not fair. <laughs> your pumpkin deserves love too. <laughs> Just as much as Soga King. That was flipping you know you know who in disguise, which I can't remember the name of. Okay, Soka King is from One Piece. We're not adding him in this mix. <laughs> uh anyway, um what what else was I thinking about it? Oh oh yes. Sora I absolutely adore and it's it, it's she's the perfect character for for an anniversary season. Absolutely perfect. She's the perfect blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> Blueberry, oh my god. It's better than calling her baby blue. And plus, that's, I, that's I, I, I just I just love what Toei did with, did with this year's season. It, it was a pure experimental season, and it worked perfectly. They made a blue cure the leader, and they also added a boy cure as part of the main cast. Which was something that I really wanted for like a long time, and they finally did that. Everybody I'm going to say this right it, now. Also... Gone. Oh. Sorry, what was that, Phoenix? Oh, oh all right. I, I can say what I have to say afterward. I think having someone like Tubasa as the boy, ki uh, as a boy kid, it, it's absolutely perfect because it, his voice, his voice is just, he's just perfect overall. What, what else can I say? <laughs> So, anything else you want to say, guys? Um, I also want to say the OST for Hiragaru Sky is really rocking. I really do like the music. Um, I can't, I can't really you say much about. The vocal song. Well, I did hear the opening and the ending themes. I might have to check out the vocal soundtracks though. You're gonna have to because they're all bangers. I don't make the rules; oh. I just follow them. <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, I know that we're I know they're gonna probably gonna be bangers. I I I did say before, despite me like hating Hugato so much, I did praise the hell out of the vocal soundtracks. It so does have its does have its positive points. Yeah, I'm just saying that now. Like 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 for example, flipping Hannah's a good one. Like a, yeah, like I literally spent over ten minutes talking about the positives and like. In my Hugo Toe review. And then 50 minutes talking about the negatives. 
<laughs> oh, no, no, uh, there was actually there was actually one positive that I, I should have added at the beginning, and that was actually one episode centered around Saya. Uh, the yes, only episode the angel. Yeah. <laughs> and plus, I pretty much I pretty much went a bit I pretty much went easy on Saya in uh in my review. No, all that hate went towards Emiru. <laughs> you know, Emiru just looks up at the <laughs> looks up at Star like, oh no, here he comes. <laughs> Gosh. You make it seem like I'm some sort of pretty cute Grim Reaper or something. Oh my god. <laughs> you just see you just see Emiru just minding our own business and then Star's just like, hello. <laughs> oh but... my god, Phoenix. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I honestly cannot. I honestly cannot praise um Hirogaru enough. It's 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 by far my favorite anniversary season, and it actually dethroned uh, Happiness Charge, and that's saying something. Oh, how do you respond, Star? I'm inclined to disagree, but like um, hey, as long as all of us uh, I, as long as all of us enjoyed Happiness Charge, that's all. I, I don't really care much. Oh, I did, I but there was just something. Yeah, about I don't know. I don't know, Star, I think they made Megumi's nose a little too big in the last last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, I enjoyed it. Oh, speaking of which, actually, good. um, starting from now, this is just for you two, I'm actually going to start searching around on the internet, because apparently, um, what was it? Apparently clips, of, clips from All Stars F have begun to circulate online due to a rental service over in Japan. Um, Renting them has begun. Ha, fuck sake, hey, come on. A rental yeah, service no. in Japan has have started to give out the movie early, so I'm, I'm gonna be on the hunt for that now. Okay. As long as it, as long as I get to see the movie before my birthday, that'd be great. When is that, Phoenix? I want to see the movie before my birthday. Now, when is your birthday? Ah, yeah. uh, two weeks from now. I might be able to have it by then. Uh, well. We don't. Uh, we don't know when it's coming out, though. If it if it doesn't come out by then, that's totally fine. Well, no, that's fine. I do know your birthday is like a few, uh, a few days before my niece's birthday. Oh, cool! Yay! Yeah, she's turning all twenty-four can, this year. All I can say is say is from from what I've seen so far, in, inclu including some of the clips because they were post because they were posted to pre to, to pre record. Shit's gonna hit the fan. Just saying that now. I don't also told me that stuff hits the fan too. Hmm. Well, I am a bit skeptical on the fact that they would like bring back all the cures. On the other hand, I'm curious to see how it will play out. I mean, you can't be that mad. It's not. It's not focused on all of them. Just hey, focused on most. On I'm some not. Of them. I'm not mad. I'm just a. I'm just a bit. I'm just a bit skeptical and a bit worried. To be honest here, Star, after seeing the trailers and some of the clips and everything, all I can say is you don't have to worry about that. It's not as fan service as power as Sen Super Sentai. In fact, All Stars F, I would actually say, it, it, it does something entirely new, and I think you'll love it when you watch it. As long as, okay, as, lo as, long as it has a good story and as long as it has its good music, uh, that's, all I, that's all I need to know. Macron is in it. You should be at least be happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I'm I'm joking. I'm joking. I you know. I know. <laughs> Gosh. I mean, the cure, cure, cure is like be is not them being milked is not like as bad as how Maho goes was being milked. I mean, oh. how they're still being milked at this point. <laughs> I mean, yeah. out of all the seasons I've seen, and that, my whole girls was li literally had, had literally just just shot up in pretty gear in pretty gear for fan favorites. They Toei ha clearly has a favorite. Okay, we all know they do. Yeah. Yep. And I'm, <laughs> I am glad that Star Twinkle did like took a few notes for my whole girls in terms of world building. Absolutely. That's why it's my, that's why it's one of my favorite seconds and um, generation seasons. 
people got the got the right to disagree with Star Twinkle. How dare you? <laughs> I'm, I'm still I'm still angry. Nobody is allowed no. to hate that season, <laughs> especially Star. Cure Star, not you, Star. I know. <laughs> crazy, crazy stuff. But yeah, Hero Garu's good. Really good in our opinion. Yep. I, I love it. You love it. Phoenix loves it. We, we, we all love the. We all love it. I don't know mm-hmm. about Wes. Where is he? You don't know about Wes. Does he love it? I, I, I think he does, yeah, as well. Probably does. does. Wes, if you're watching the video, you gotta tell us if you like it or not. Comment <laughs> down below if, if you do. I'm waiting. But yeah, just yet. I'll, but yeah, I will have to check out the trailer for a wonderful pretty cure. I would have checked it. I would have checked it out earlier, but like there was one. I for, again, one I forgot about it, and two there were other anime that I was like watching at the time. Like literally five <laughs> anime that I'm watching. That I'm currently watching that is already airing. What's that? Uh, I won't watching say. Monkeys. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to like get back I'm gonna have to get back into uh I'm gonna have to get back into one piece really soon. Especially since the um um what arc is it called? I'm not sure. The egghead yeah. arc. No worries, egghead. <laughs> <laughs> and sadly Eggman does not make an appearance, sadly. Imagine if he did. <laughs> If anybody could incorporate Eggman into it, it's One Piece. And the time frame, uh, and the time frame to appear in this, uh, appear in it is now, pretty much. Would have been the best callback to Sonic. Literally. But yeah, there's five anime that I'm, like currently. There's five anime that just that started airing this uh, month. That I'm currently uh, currently watching. I know one of them is like. I know one of them that I talked about with Phoenix, and like, do like it has the like a tiny bit of fan service, but it's still mo. It's 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 mostly like just a cutesy type of anime, like almost on the same level. It's pretty much on the same level as My Dress Up Darling. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. Crap, that's right. I still have to. I still got to finish season one of The Dangers in My Heart. I only saw like one. I think I only saw like one. I think I saw like one or two episodes of it. I still, so I need to like get back into that or when I have the because chance. Because the main character is such an emo bit, bitch boy as Edge Lord. <laughs> oh my god, Phoenix! <laughs> basically, what he is. Yeah. I mean, that's fair enough. Quite I haven't seen it. The first lines of the ep- quite literally, the first lines of the episode is, "Oh, see that girl over there? She's very beautiful, tall, and gorgeous. I want to kill her." Wow. Yeah. Uh. And speaking speaking of uh speaking of anime that are airing that's uh airing this month, uh, there's actually one particular that uh we got to pretty much talk about. Elephant in the room. No, not that. So I'm pretty sure it's it's pretty much the one that we've been like talking about in Phoenix's server. Oh. Wait. Oh, <laughs> oh! I know, who, I know, I know what you're on about. <laughs> oh, uh, so, <laughs> so for clear Your discretion is advised. <laughs> so for clear context, um, months ago there was one anime that was like there was one anime trailer that was teased, which was called uh, "Gushing Over Magical Girls." Uh, the premise of that is the main character known as Hiragi, um. Iwagi Utsuna, uh, she ends up, she actually had adores the heroes, which are known as Trez Magia, Magia, and ironically enough, she ends up becoming their main, their main villain, all thanks to, like, the, all thanks to, uh, Kyubei 2.0. I don't know who that is, but okay. Yeah, Kyubei 2.0, I call him that because, like, <laughs> it's basically no! it's basically a clone no! of it's kind of like a clone of Cubay from Madoka Magica. No, 
Ah, I see. <laughs> now, I actually haven't seen um, the entire thing, but I've actually seen clips of it on YouTube, and all Everybody I can say is... Car. All I can say is, kids, don't watch it. Don't watch it until, until you're at least 18 years old, because it is not made for kids. <laughs> watch it at all until you're at least 24 but yeah months yeah months will go by and uh right before it started airing it was announced that the show it was announced that of course the show would be uncensored uh thanks to uh high dive um which is a streaming service who is like definitely definitely does not stand does not uh, stand down when it comes to uh airing their anime they they're pretty much known for uh airing it like they put them as known for like sticking completely to the source material when it comes to their anime. Like they've there's also another anime that they're currently that they're currently airing on their platform, which is called Chain Soldier, and that also and that pretty much aired a day after gushing over Magical Girls started airing. Gosh. <laughs> but yeah, gushing over Magical Girls easily. Easily the most, easily the most raunchiest anime I've ever seen in 2024 so far. Hey, I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the the the, the amount of not safe for work jokes. It's it's hatch. It, I, I I don't even class it as an anime. Even it's that that shit crazy. Oh, it's cl- it's pretty much is- it's almost close to an H anime. Yeah, it's it's madness. It really is. I'm just glad there's. I'm glad Sailor Moon didn't have these villains. Good lord. (laughs) Yeah. And to I mean to be fair, Sailor Moon no Sailor Moon barely even had any like uh attractive attractive female villains. Yeah, all that attractiveness went to the Sailor Scouts. (laughs) (laughs) They were not not attractive. Oh, even Pritikyo had attractive uh villains. Oh hell yeah! Too right now. The one, the oh for fuck's sake! What, 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 what's the female's one name from from um, uh, fucking delicious party? What, what was her name again? I can't remember. Uh, was it Sekotoru? I think. Sekotoru, I think so. It's 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 definitely not um fl- flipping ah. Uh, it, it most definitely wasn't uh. What, Gentle Lou? Yeah. It definitely wasn't Gentle Lou, because she actually became yeah, because Gear Finale in the end. Up. Yeah, because she got a glow up. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's getting at that joke. I'm I, sad. I, get, I pretty much get it, because she's more of a gold cure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still, gotcha over Magical Girls. Fucking crazy, I tell you. Fucking crazy. Yeah, even up episode three, easily the most raunchiest one in the whole show. So, also, the blue one, Jesus Christ, she, <laughs> she, she she just can't catch a break in this series. Like, she thought it was pretty good, and at that point, she was just like, "Hey, give up." She swat the grass. She got held up, and then she was like, "Oh no, what happens now?" And you see, she basically point, she got probably... blind. She got blindfolded twice in a row. Sounds like her problem. That's her. I mean, th- nah, she yeah. did get herself. She did get herself captured, and twice she got fondled. I mean, the first episode, all three of them got um. They got spanked real hard. <laughs> yeah, but 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 the past two episodes alone, oh, yeah. she just can't catch a break. The poor girl. Have you seen the way she was drawn? Uh no. Oh, I thought. She- I think she's actually the more more mature one of of the um, of of the three heroes, are they, Star? Uh, in a way, kinda, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I was always pretty <laughs> yeah, much yeah. like the sm- the smart one. Uh, so far, she's like the tough one, and Magenta, she's the cute one. I always, I actually just call them by 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 the colors because I, I just can't, I, I won't ever remember their names. 
Oh, they did not have to give her the Toja Nozomi body. Because <laughs> that's basically what she looks like. She's to she's just Toja Nozomi. In magical oh, form. Sh and blue. Oh, yes. Would it be better to compare her to Emma? Mmm. Huh? Actually, I, I, I can put maybe. Okay, okay, I'm looking this up. Hang on. And of course, I'm not going to forget that flipping um, picture you posted in Phoenix's server star <laughs> of, the, of the green villain being trapped in something, which, 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 which looks like a flipping you-know-what. At this point, if this, if this happened to me twice, I would have just given up. At this point, no. <laughs> yeah. But, but bear in mind that it, it only happened once uh, to that one, so... But really, that wasn't really... Yeah, that wasn't really much of a jar. It was more like a, a light... It was more much more like a light bulb, and she got electrocuted, like, really hard. And at the end, she... And then at the end... And then at the end, after being called cute, she ended up she ended up falling in love with uh Utena to the point where it pretty much brought out Yuri vibes. I mean, thing and I think what I liked about that one is the fact that it wasn't really like a, much of like a Yuri tease. Like she definitely, she genuinely loves her. The power of love can save us. Nope. I just want that to happen so bad. <laughs> it's there's no love here, Phoenix. Just pure. It's just pure madness. Oh, I don't want it to be, say. be the power of love saves her. I generally want it to be like, oh, we'll try anything to save you. No, just no. Hmm. But I and I am curious on what the third. I am curious about what the third member. Of the evil side will be like, yeah, because so far they've they've they've, they've only introduced the introduced the um, two members. Yes, the, the the third one is still yet to come. Which, 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 which judging by the looks of it, because I've actually seen some of the um stuff that's going to happen. Um, she, I don't think she's going to say much because her voice is quite quiet, to say the least. Interesting. Well, on a, I will, one thing I also will also say. No, no. The way the the way the evil the way the evil side the way the villain is Lord dress doesn't even it, it, like it, it's more extreme. I would say it's more extreme than the Sailor Starlights. Yeah, it's they're just going all out on the um fan service stuff in this in this one. <laughs> no, they're just going all out and actually doing something. If the generals were smart and pretty good, they would be doing. Doing all the fighting themselves. And to be fair, they were probably the one. To be fair, some show, some shoujo anime had like a tiny bit of had some bit of fan service. Uh, there was one. There was actually one anime that I watched, which was No Switch Kamugi Chan, which was yeah, No Switch Kamugi Chan. Uh, there were two versions of it. One of them had more fan service, while the other one it didn't really had had like a, just a small bit of it. But it like it. It wasn't that, it wasn't that, like, it wasn't that raunchy, it wasn't anything like that. It still felt more, it still felt mostly like, like, just a cutesy type of magical girl anime. Yeah, and it wasn't, just, it wasn't, it's not just that, but like, even pre power has its, like, even pre power has its small bit of fan service as well. Oh, that's simple gear. De oh yeah, definitely Sinful Gear, which I still have to get into. I mean, if you like um, Nodoka, you you'll love her as uh, you love Ayo Yuki as a uh, Hibiki. <laughs> it's just the same plot, except a lot more fan service. Oh boy! <laughs> See what I mean when you watch the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> and it gets more crazy as you watch it. Inch it'll be interesting. It'll be quite it'll be quite the experience to uh yeah, it'll be quite the experience. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I can't keep a straight face. <laughs> and nobody spoils it for him in the comment section. I want him to see it for himself. I'm watching you all. Oh God. <laughs> God damn it, Phoenix. You and your ever staring eye, just staring down at people. I'm in your walls. Oh, wait, you're in the wall? In I just banged on my walls just to just, just tell you to piss off. <laughs> also, I know you're not. I've right. been meaning to ask, how would, you f how would you feel if Fortnite actually collaborated with Pudicure? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, they already. Oh, actually. Sorry. I, I just got to remind of something. Yeah. And um, I, f I think it was about half a year ago now, or it could have been a bit longer. But but I, but I remember but I remember seeing on Twitter that there was a Mexico ex exclusive skin released that was based off a TV show character. Now I could be wrong, but um, hang on, let, let me look it up real quick. Give me a minute. Okay. Let me look it up. Think you're black using AK-47. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, would her hands be able to fit? Be able to use it, because her hands are big. Okay, now I'm just imagining all the characters using soft <laughs> AK 47s. <laughs> 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 I also, I also did saw some. I also did like saw like concept of, of how like Sonic would look like if he was if he was actually in, he would be in Fortnite. And I will say, oh. <laughs> I, I I did a double take at first, but I, I thought it, I, I thought it was I thought it was fine. I thought it looked fine. And I and you know if. If they can pretty much make Sonic's build pretty much like on like on a range of the uh, actual Fortnite build, then I I guess I can probably see Sonic being in uh, Fortnite. Right, found it. It didn't it, it didn't take long to, it didn't take long for me to find the skin for Fortnite. I'm gonna post it in the um, admin chat real quick. But yeah, this this game was was released a few months ago, and was only available over in Mexico. So, and the funny thing is, I actually I've actually have seen it once before. Let me up. Just post it in the chat. All right, let's see what we're rocking with. It's a it, it it's based off, off, off it's based off a TV show from the seventies, apparently. Oh, I saw. I definitely saw that skin. <laughs> Yep, yeah, yep, that, yep, that's only available in Mexico, so if to say it, 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 it ever did happen, oh. those skins will only be released in Japan. And I can pretty much remember that uh, skin being a, getting a lot of hate, basically because of how it looks. Hmm. I don't even like the way it looks. It just looks. It, it looks. It doesn't yeah? It doesn't even look that great. But I I don't hate it or anything. It yeah. looks like the big fat red guy from Cow and Chicken. <laughs> the, yeah, the red guy. S somebody else knows of that show. Good lord. I did. I did watch Cow and Chicken, and do I do remember seeing like um. So you know, so you know what I mean, right? Yeah. He looked. Definitely. The only difference is he's actually wearing pants. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give you the rundown, there was a show called Cow and Chicken. These two characters were a cow and a chicken born to a, hum a pair of human legs. One of the characters in the show was a giant fat red guy that only wore clothes up to his torso. He did not wear any pants, no matter what he was wearing. Is he fucking Santa Claus? <laughs> no. Actually, I don't even think he wore Santa outfit. That would mind me. I would love. No. I would love to see Cartoon Network's second take at a racing game. I would love to see them do another punch time explosion. If they were to do that one, they better improve on the uh, last one. 
happened to the last one. Nothing happened to it. I like I, I did say before it was it's it's a good it's a good game. I just wish they would have done a bit better on the kit. I just wish they would have done a bit better on the character roster and the control. You're not wrong. So to be fair, I definitely only played, played the Switch version. What? It didn't even release on the Switch though. It's not Switch. Uh, 3D, 3DS. I'm I'm mixing up my words. I'm mixing up my words considering I'm <laughs> reading like. I just found a, a terrible Jujutsu Kaisen of Woody and Buzz doing domain expansion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Domain oh my expansion. God. Snakes in my boots. Buzz. Domain expansion. <laughs> Infinity <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I also I can't. There's also one thing that I want to talk when I'm talking about. It's pretty much, well, actually, a lot of things considering about Capcom and what's been going on with them. So, firstly, um, me and Phoenix pretty much already know. I'm pretty sure you probably already uh, probably already heard of it, Oliver, about the um collaboration between Spy Family and Street Fighter. Oh yeah, I think, that. Terrible, I think that was a visual for the game. movie. No, no, no. They was there was gonna be. This was an actual collab. It wasn't just like a movie. They, they a lot of people were hyped. To, like li they literally thought that um your was actually gonna be a playable character in the game. But when the collab came out, it turns out that it was actually a it was actually a costume for the OC. Not. Oh, it's so bad. It the, yeah, it, it looks bad. terrible. It's not even good because it, it. I wish to download that co kind of costume on my character. It would just look all buff as hell because I just made her a muscle white boo. Like everybody was looking at Capcom was and like, you hyped us up for this shit for this. You hyped us up for this shit, man. <laughs> uh. So bad. And trust me, th th that's just the tip of the iceberg of, of like Capcom's dumbassery. Because like, there's also one point where they legit think that certain like all mods are considered cheating, even visual mods. Yes. Okay, just saying this now. They gave us a terrible mod in Jewelry's outfit. Give us Jewelry's outfit from Street Fighter Five back. <laughs> that was the best one. If it's just visual mods. That doesn't affect the game whatsoever. Then that's not cheating. Exactly like, at all. I did see a mod where you could actually make Jury look like Yamato from One Piece. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, yeah. Really good mod. Though. Yeah, I think uh, the reason why they was I think the reason why they would think this it pretty much like the stem from like months ago, where. One of the uh commentators accidentally forgot to turn off his nude mods. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that a few months ago. <laughs> uh, oh, my. I imagine being caught with here? that. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, God damn. Like, well, like, like, I know you like your shit, but still. Uh, I can just see everyone looking like, what the heck? <laughs> That's a new kind of game mechanic for, for Capcom? I can imagine the guy playing as Shun Li didn't even know that the commentator had his uh, nude mods on and he was like, what the fuck am I seeing here? Hey, security, we, I got, know. we got a new security. Find that commentator and then bring him to my office. We're going to have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, speaking of fighting games, in about six, in about six days' time, at the time of this recording, um, Tekken Eight is Tekken Eight is coming out, and I and I'm actually really looking forward to it. I will yeah. say I did play like um I did play like two no no not two but like three to four Tekken games in my uh, entire life. I only play like four of them. I'm not really that good. I'm, <laughs> I'm not really that great on Tekken, but I did enjoy my time with those games. My Irish friend, which I've mentioned a few a few times on on on, on the channel Star, he. 
He's actually the best player I've seen on, on, on Tekken, to be honest. Really? Yeah, he's... Out of everyone I know, he, he, just, he just destroys everybody I've seen. God. If that's the case, he should probably he should probably enter he should probably enter a tournament then. Like oh he's, oh, he's not he's not that good star. Well, well, well I don't think anyway, but <laughs> he, he's not really that kind of person who just enters stuff. He, he he's just he, he's just on it just to mess around really. And yet he's really good at Tekken. Hmm. <laughs> he's he's played Tekken pretty much all his life, so he is absolutely hyped for the um eighth game. I mean, if he played the game all his, if he played the game all his life, then surely he would he would at least try to like do just one tournament just for shits and giggles. The only thing is, he actually lives in Ireland, so I don't think there is any around his area. Uh, I know, I know for a fact since that's, since I'm in the UK, there there is there is no stuff like that around around um my local area anyway. So yeah, that's why people usually just like. My that's why I usually just try to and people will just try to get a visa in order to head over to the US in order to like um in order to play in the like big league tournaments. Yeah, I think it's I think to be honest, it's it's a much bigger thing in the US really. Yeah. Than in Aaron Island. It's a much bigger thing over there. Not just in the US, also in Japan too. Yeah. Yeah. That's really funny too. I'm curious to see how um I'm curious to see how 2024's Evo will look. What what thing star, sorry? Uh I'm curious to see how uh 2024's Evo will uh would be like. I bet you any money second eight is gonna be pre present there. Oh definitely. It, it it's it, it's the it's the, it's, the, it's the new big fighter on the block after all. Next to Street Fighter Six. And I can pretty much see a lot of people in the FGC just like praying, just getting on their knees, praying that Tekken 8 would, would like release would actually be good and actually not have any bullshit on like Mortal Kombat 1 and Street Fighter 6. All I can, I've actually played the, t the, the Tekken 8 demo and the closed beta, and I can happily say, well, from my end anyway, there is no secondhand bullshit with this game. Yeah, not just that. I'm just. I'm also talking about like, like I'm talking about like post launch as well. I know that, um they've already announced the first bunch of DLC coming out to the game, but it's not going to come out on launch as such. Which is yeah, I know. Which, which is which is good because like, uh, I can because like there's a lot of shit going on with like not just Mortal Kombat One, but yeah, I mean yeah, not just with Street Fighter Six, but yeah, Mortal Kombat One, even Naruto Storm connections as well. I know for because like for Mortal Kombat One, like I can already tell, uh, we already know it was like it runs like shit on a Switch. But like I remember, <laughs> but like there was one fate. They literally charged over ten bucks for one fatality. I mean, the Switch is Switch, so what do you expect? Yeah, but we're already paying what three hundred dollars for the Switch. At least that's at least we're paying three hundred dollars for something worthwhile. But literally, the ten bucks. Is, ten course. bucks for one fatality. I mean, it, it, I mean, if this was um flipping, like what? The, 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 the early two thousand tens, it'd be like two pounds. Two pounds. <laughs> not not ten. Like who the fuck would pay that much money for one fatality? <laughs> you would be surprised. <laughs> If it feels like six or seven, then then that's fair enough. But one, like, why <laughs> one? <laughs> uh, it doesn't stop there. We're not. It's even Naruto Storm Connections also had its issues. Like when it, like, I can tell you, when the game was launched, there were a bunch of issues. Firstly, it had to do with the character roster and how there were too many Naruto duplicates. As well as and as well as duplicates for other characters, because it really didn't feel like 150 characters. It just felt like over 120 with just multiple duplicates. And like they did introduce like new characters, ten of them, but they were characters that uh people did not feel interested in. And there were also two new characters, exclusive, 
exclusive characters that were part of the game, but they were not, they did not make those characters playable. Another thing, uh, the online was a pretty, I can, from, from what I've heard, the online is terrible and people even when you make go into a custom match you cannot make a private you cannot make a private game for your uh, friends so that's a red flag and i also heard that like um the story mode was really uh underwhelming especially the the history mode where you mostly just going through boss fights and they also skipped over like important fights not only that but even the voice acting was terrible so bad that they even got they even got on like um Maul Flanagan who was like the main voice of Naruto they got on they got on her ass for that shit and she had to defend herself God. Yeah that was so it was literally shitstorm then fair yeah, enough Yeah there's a lot of shit that was going on but like Bandai Namco they stated that they just started this just getting started on the uh on the dlc for the season one pass i know like the first character is hagoromo and um and they also plan on work they also plan on improving on the online which means they're probably gonna like try and they're probably gonna finally add custom matchmaking and they're also trying their best to, they also say they're gonna try their best to rework on the voice acting So yeah, that game, <laughs> that game really tainted the Storm series. That's why you shouldn't play any of the Ninja Storm series. You should play better games like Peach. <laughs> <laughs> this is not sponsored by <laughs> Nintendo. Oh yeah, that, that that Princess Peach game is coming out this year, isn't it? Yep. Nice. I will be playing it on my Let's Play channel. I might get it at a later time, but um, it really depends on what games coming out coming out at the time. I might actually get. I might actually Dave could get it on my birthday. Oh, nice! <sighs> and yeah, to be fair, no. To be fair, I did play like two Storm games. One, which is, and both of those games. What both of those games are actually good, especially Storm Four. I think that's the best Storm game in the series. Mm. Nice stuff. Yep. But even when even but I will say, even though no, even though Storm Connections pretty much came out like the biggest letdown, at least. At least we can all. At least people can now look. For, can now just look forward to Dragon Ball Spark and Zero, aka Budokai Tenkaichi Four. Hmm. Let's hope Which... they keep the moment. Let's hope they keep that momentum. Wait. Wait. Which for? Which for those? Which for those? If those were still on PS4 and Xbox One. It is time for you to upgrade, my friends, because I think it's safe to say, thanks to all the I'm sure, thanks to thanks to the stuff um, problems being on. Being a thing, no longer being a thing. I th I think more and more games are, are start are going to start tr are transitioning over to the to those systems. Yep, something that I gotta be all, something that I gotta prepare myself for. Which all I can say is about bloody time. Because it's been too long, honestly. Yeah, because I I did play the whole Buddha I think Kaiji series out of all and out of all three of those games. I always, I will always say, Budokai Tenkaichi 3 is the number one. Is easily the best Dragon Ball Z game I've ever played. I'll also get some people like, but actually, the first one is actually better. <laughs> I better, not, I better not hear game. anybody say Budokai Tenkaichi 1 is better. If they do, you shove them in a the toilet. <laughs> Lol. Cause like oh, I head first in the Cause like Budokan Tenkaichi One, not a bad game. It does. It just has it. It just doesn't really compare much to Budokan Tenkaichi Two or Three. I mean, that game would not let you cannot transform in that game. You manually have to choose the forms, and even unlocking certain characters was a bit of an. It was a bit of a pain too, cause like it, it just felt a bit complex trying to unlock characters there. 
Hmm. But yeah. Back in the beef second. All right. But yeah, I am looking forward to Budokan Tenkaichi Four or Spark and Zero, whichever one, which whichever one people want to call it. But yeah, I am looking forward to that game. Uh, I know it's going to be made by Spike Chunsoft, but to be fair, uh, before Spike and Chunsoft before they merged, Spike was pretty much Spike was pretty much known for making the Budokan Tenkaichi games, which everybody adored. So it's not. Oh, yeah. So like as I so, like to repeat, I I know Spike Chunsoft is gonna be behind the game and I know the track record with J Star Victory versus and Jump Force, but before they even merged, Spike was his own thing, which where they did pretty much developed the uh the Budokan Tenkaichi games, which did which some I which actually did well in terms of like how in terms of what players and everybody pretty much thought about the games. So they, those three games were commercially like praised a lot. So considering that this is going to be the fourth game in the series, there is something to look forward to. So I'm going to, so I am hoping that Spike Chunsoft can get their shit together and actually like actually work, actually like work hard on Budokan Tenkaichi 4. Well, it's either do or die for this game, it seems. Yep, especially considering like how, consider considering like um how bit mid Kakarot was, and also like nobody cared about Dragon Ball the Breakers. That shit didn't it, it did not live up to the hype. Yeah, oh, yeah I heard about the game, but then, yeah, but then as soon as it came out, it died. So well, Freezer, don't bl don't blame us. Blame the developers. Yep. Who else do you think I'm blaming, clown? <laughs> and plus, and plus, it's it's also online only. So once the servers go down, that's it. The the game can, can no longer be played. Yep. Which why is it not online? Which why is it? Which why is it? I don't know. Yeah, that game is. <laughs> but yeah, that game is completely dead. Was like Goku. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, DBZ fan. I'm just not a fan of Goku anymore. <laughs> it, was it because uh -oh. of Dragon Ball Super? Oh, I already lost it when when Toriyama said, "Oh, GT's not canon." I the moment he said that, I was so done. <laughs> also, I I saw somebody saying, "Oh, Super Saiyan Four should have been made canon in Super." I'm like, hell no. No. I said that Super Saiyan 4 should have been made, made canon in Super just because he didn't like Ultra Instinct. <laughs> I, I kind of have to agree with him. I just do not like this, the God forms. They're so freaking boring. Be careful when you say that around the Enix, because I'm, I'm sure some of the fans heard that, they'll go ape shit, ape shit on you. Dude, I went to an entire convention and said Goku sucks. Honestly, I don't think the- I don't, Honestly, I don't think the Dragon Ball fans are as bad as, like, the big three fans. Like, I'm talking mostly One Piece and Naruto fans. Not because the One Piece mm. and Naruto fanboys always have- make an argument like, Oh, Luffy can beat Naruto. But in reality, Tori- Ishimoto and Oda are actually best friends. I remember I did show you guys that um that screenshot of this one of this one piece account named Tomo. He got his ass he got his ass clapped by the community notes. So he, he literally trying to clapped. like which mind you <laughs> gone like literally trying to literally trying to hammer down remind people that Bonnie Bonnie Jewelry is twelve years old. <laughs> Oh yes! <laughs> oh, I saw that. Sucks to be him, I'd yeah, say. Right. Sucks to be Just him. To make this clear, I did not care enough for Bonnie until we saw the flashback. Bonnie from fucking Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> I didn't care for that Bonnie either. 
Careful, Phoenix. He might appear in your nightmares yet. Let him. We can duke it out there. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just like, can people, can y'all really just at least just enjoy the show without complaining about certain shit that doesn't even matter much? Like, it's just a exactly. fucking fictional character. Like, it's not gonna do anything harm. Exactly. At least and, it's better. At least it's better than hearing people say, "Oh, Yamato's a man," despite the fact that Oda confirmed she's female. Yeah, if it's Oda, com well. if Oda confirmed that, uh, if Oda confirms that Yamato is female, then at people need to at least accept that shit and not send death threats to him. Like it's stupid. Like it's stupid. People just do that because it's because they don't like something. Literally, almost every time, almost every time One Piece gets training for some shit, they always have to throw goddamn death threats at Oda. Like it's his shit. Let it, let the man write his shit. No, like no star. I have to let him cook. <laughs> yes, let now, let I, Oda cook. Had, let Oda cook. I had to meme. <laughs> I know people. I, I know people don't do this with with um. This guy, because 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 he's the god of racing games, after all. This is um Kazuki Yamauchi. <laughs> he literally has the same problem as as um. Wait, wait, wait the other guy. He, he can add shit whenever he wants to his games, and yet <laughs> people still want find a way to complain about it. Very complained about Super Street Fighter Six when not having having enough jewelry. <laughs> Cause it's just Super Street Fighter Six is just boring now. I'm no story. Yeah, I think for I think for the full, not not full game. I I, I still think Street Fighter um, Six is still going in some way, but just not at the moment. Yeah, it's going. It's just not a good story. Hmm. Mortal Kombat has a better story. It's just that Street Fighter tried to do more with it, but after what 20, 20 40 years after the main game, after Street Fighter Five ended, Shadow Loop it's just kind of the characters doing their own thing at this point. Oh, speaking There's of no need for them to start working together. Speaking of which, I am looking forward to like um a video from Clement J sixty four, which is called the Insane Law of Mortal Kombat. I know he's working on that, and like um. But you'll probably like the video that the one video that he made, which is called the insane lore of Tekken, where we pretty much go through the entire timeline of Tekken. I think I've actually seen that video too. All I can say is the, the it's actually batshit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All this over a, over a flipping fighting game. You, you, you fight goddamn bears, pandas, fu a fucking kangaroo in the older games. There's fucking World War Three that happens. Another World War that happens, isn't it? Tekken Eight, apparently. Yeah, I really appreciate the amount of hard work and research he's done on those games, and it makes like the length of those of those videos he made really much makes pretty. It one hundred percent makes sense because there was like a lot of lore that he had to like that he had to go. Th there was like a lot of lore in those games, so much that he had to like they had to like bust his ass in order to go through every single piece of information just to like put it all together and like an actual like in, in all in order for like every single timeline for like street fighter and uh tekken it's honestly just madness yeah so i i really do appreciate the amount of hard work the amount of hard work that he's put into those videos i suppose it's considering that he, that the insane law of tekken that is his most popular video, like literally up to like five million views. Crazy. So yeah, him switching content definitely benefited him. <laughs> mm. I still can't get over the fact I still can't get over the fact that he actually made a whole retrospective on the Gal Gun series. The the Gal Gun. <laughs> yeah. The, it, I know, cause like I know that like series was made by the same creators who made a few some of the Mega Man games for the Nintendo DS, as well as Mega Man Nine and Ten. And I don't like I don't have I have well, never played new Mega Man Twelve, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. 
I wonder when they will. They, I wonder when they will ever make a Mega Man Twelve, or at least a Mega Man X Nine. Mm-hmm. What is it, Nick? Oh, I just, I just kind of saw something I should not have seen. What you saw? Oh no! I saw a picture. Oh, I just saw, I saw a picture of some somebody cosplaying Foxy, and it looks so bad. <laughs> I am debating. I'm debating on sharing it into this other server that I end because I know they there's so much fanboys for Foxy. <laughs> anyway, see see how they react. Drew it. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, now to t- now time to wait for the storm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that's about it for topics for this episode. Unless you got any unless some of you got anything else to say. I don't. Uh, stay tuned to my gaming channel because I'm also gonna be playing High Five Rush. High five high high five rush. Uh, fair enough. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this podcast. Uh, it's been, it's been, it's been hella fun talking about these topics. Uh, really is. Well, po- yeah, maybe next next time we'll probably uh next time we'll probably do a podcast with more of the Dream Star Squad. But until then, this of course this is the Dream Star Squad signing out. As always, go Kigenyo and have a fantastic day, everyone. Thanks. Bye.